Hi, good, good evening. At this time, I'd like to call this meeting of the Madison Board of Selectmen to order on March 11, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the record show all selectmen are present. Let us see consent, consent agenda warrant number 22, 225 19, number 23, 225 19. Payroll registers number 9, 2, uh, 228, 19, and number 10, 37, 19. I have a motion to accept the payroll, uh, excuse me, the uh, payroll and warrants as read. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Letter D, acceptance of the meeting minutes from February 25th, 2019. We have a motion and a second to accept the meeting minutes of February 25th, 2019. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Letter E, new business. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing to discuss creation of a tax increment financing district for Woodland Senior Living of Madison. At this time, the public hearing is open. Thank you, sir. At this time, I would like to invite Matthew Walters with Woodland Senior Living uh, to come, and uh, he will work through a brief uh, presentation to explain uh, what the Woodlands facilities are and how they operate. Uh, and then I will uh, provide a, a bit of information about the, the TIF that we're talking about in general for this project. But Matthew, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. I know it's always... Uh, a little dice at this time of year, whether the weather's going to cooperate, but I, I really appreciate you coming out and uh, giving us the opportunity to present a uh, project that we're very excited about. Um, been asked to give a little overview of our organization for those that don't know a lot about us. Uh, we, we started the business in 1980, actually my parents did in 1980, I was only a year old. And we've been operating assisted living communities in Maine for the last 39 years. Um, over the last 20 years, we have been developing specialized memory care communities, and that's what we're proposing uh, to create here in Madison. We have 14 separately licensed communities throughout the state, um, in Brewer, Cape Elizabeth, Farmington Hollow, Lewiston, Rockland, and Waterville. Uh, we currently care for over 600 residents, and we employ just under or over 400 staff people, depending on the day. We provide three types of uh, programs, assisted living, memory care, and independent apartments that have assisted living services. The, uh, the project that we're going to be discussing here would be strictly memory care for people with Alzheimer's disease or related memory impairments. We've been recognized recently, we've been growing quite rapidly over the last 10 years. We've had a, a few recognitions over the last couple of years that, that we're particularly proud of. We uh, were named the 2018 Maine Family Business of the Year from the Institute for Family Owned Businesses. We were twice named the Corporate Champion Award for our partnership with the Maine Chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. And then our most recent community that we've developed in two phases in Farmington, a memory care community and then assisted living and apartments in Farmington uh, allowed us to receive the Business Attraction Award from the Greater Franklin Development Council last year and then the Business Expansion Award uh, just a few months ago. A few, a few quick facts about Alzheimer's disease. I'm sure that many of you in the room have uh, somehow had a personal connection, somebody in, in a family member or a, a friend of the family. But these are some statistics that come from the main chapter of the Alzheimer's Association that are specific to Maine. So I think that's important. One of the reasons that you know, we've been able to expand um, our memory care programs throughout the state is this there's a tremendous need. And there's very, very few people or few organizations in Maine that are providing these services, or providing them in the right way, or providing them in the places that truly need them. 
So a few statistics, hopefully everybody can see there. We tried to make them as big as we could. Um, there's believed to be over 28,000 people in Maine who are living with Alzheimer's disease currently. Uh, by 2025, they're expecting to see a 25% increase in that as people live longer and medical care is more available and better. People are living longer and the, uh, the longer you live, the higher the probability of having Alzheimer's disease or another uh, dementia. It's actually the sixth leading cause of death in the state of Maine. And um, yeah, so there's a 25% increase to be 35,000 by 2025. So to talk specifically about what we're planning to develop here in Madison, this is a rendering, architectural rendering of, of, of the building itself. It is a 42-bed specialized memory care community. There'll be, if, if we're able to start on schedule this, uh, this spring, assuming uh, everything gets approved, uh, it will be completed by next summer, so it's about a 12-month development time frame. The building is just over 20,000 square feet. There will be 42 residents that we serve. Uh, there will be 10 private rooms and 16 shared rooms. So of the 42 residents, 32 of the residents will be uh, people that are subsidized through the main care program. One of the reasons that this particular area uh, attracted us is that our Waterville community and our Farmington communities are completely full. We're 100%. And between those two locations, we have over 20 people in each location on a waiting list that are main care <coughs> recipients. So there's only a finite number of main care uh, beds, as we call them, and there's the need significantly outstrips the supply. And it's, it's really hard when you know, what our life's work is, is taking care uh, of residents and helping families when you see a significant number of people who in some cases are in crisis and we can't help them. So, in addition to the number of people that are on our waiting list in either Farmington or Waterville, we have a number of existing residents in both of those communities that are from Madison or from Skowhegan, or as we look at our waiting list, there's a significant number of people specifically people that are receiving main care that are from this immediate area. So we decided, you know, there's probably no better area of need in our immediate uh, vicinity, and so that's why we decided to come here and why 75% of the beds in this community will be serving uh, residents on main care, which is higher than what our average, we run at about 50-50, uh, private paying and main care company-wide. Uh, we will employ 28 to 30 permanent uh, full-time staff members. Um, we have an internal policy of promoting from within, so we offer a lot of training and career opportunities and, and a, a full benefits package as well. So just some of the features of the building itself, something that makes uh, our physical plant a little bit unique is just some of the things that we do that we've learned from the development of our other communities and best practices from, from other areas of the, of the country. Uh, we have a lot of uh, open air spaces. There's actually an atrium in the middle of the building, an open air atrium in the middle. There's a secured outdoor walking paths. Um, we have an on-site physical and occupational therapy center. We partner currently with Androscoggin Home Health where they actually lease the space so we're able to provide occupational, physical therapy, speech therapy, and some skilled nursing services right on, right on site. All of, our, uh, all of our common areas are monitored 24 hours a day by video, so outdoor areas, and then interior, um, the courtyards and so forth are monitored as a safety precaution. Uh, all the resident rooms have private bathrooms, uh, we try to develop, and I have some photos of our a community that we developed in uh, Lewiston and in Farmington. There's some photos up front if anybody wanted to see um, what some of these common areas. There's a good example right there. Uh, we try to create as many purposeful areas as possible. That's a resident kitchen where we can do 
cooking activities, the residents can get their own coffee or juice or water. Uh, they'll, some residents will find a lot of comfort in doing the dishes or wiping off the counters or things like that as a way to keep them active and, and doing things that they would be used to doing at home. We have living rooms, we have quiet rooms, television rooms. As we try to create as many small spaces as possible so that people can kind of you know, have their own area without having to uh, you know, the distraction of too many people, because anytime you put anywhere between 30 and 40 people in, in one building, the more individualized spaces you have, certainly the better. So that's a, um, that's a quick overview just of our, our building and, and our company. Again, you know, we, uh, this is a real you know, passion of ours. It's something that as we've grown, we've been specializing more and more in doing these memory care communities. As I said, we see a great need in this area, and we're really hopeful that we can come and, uh, and provide this service and be, be a resource to the community. Thank you, Matthew. Does anyone have any questions about the facility before we get into the specifics of the tax increment? <coughs> because of the location of the property, the uh, location will Madison be providing sanitary and water to that facility, or would it be scouring? So, this is a rough map, and I know it's blown up, so it's kind of distorted. Here's, here's Ken's, here's Tractor Supply. This is roughly the Skowhegan line right here. So it's East Madison Road. This facility right now is the Franklin Somerset Credit Union uh, office building. So this is the location that we're talking about. And they're going to build, and there's a schematic out on the wall out front when you came in. They're going to build their own septic, uh, and water is, is, is a well, or are you getting water from the town water? From the town water. Town water. Town water. Any other questions about the facility? Can you answer his question? Who's paying for the town water? He said it's got heating in Madison. He didn't answer the question. Is it, is it Madison water? Or Madison. Madison. It'll be Madison water. The Madison water district provides services for the jail, which is over there. And I believe the Madison Water District pump house is right there. <clears throat> Any other questions about the facility? Yes. Why would you choose Madison again? Well, since, as I mentioned before, this particular area, we looked in Skowhegan and in Madison, and we came upon this lot, and it actually, as far as to capture the most people in the most convenient area, this was probably as, as good as, you know, we really were fortunate to, to find this particular lot so we can capture uh, as many people from Skowhegan and Madison uh, in the most convenient way. But it was just a matter of looking, looking at lots, speaking to, to the town. We were, you know, really impressed with the openness and professionalism of uh, the staff at the town of Madison. So this, uh, this was our first choice and uh, we we're happy to to get it under contract. Nancy, you have a question? Um, oh, this is kind of silly, but um, I'm wondering about the, the arrangement of the double rooms, the, 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 the double occupancy. Um, how do they arrange? Are they arranged in a hospital room? Or they... No, they, they, it's a single, you know, open room. It's a larger room, certainly. Mm -hmm. And the beds, I'll see if there's a, uh, a photo because that's a that's a single single room there. Um, some of the rooms, depending on if they're in the corner of the building or in uh, on one of the general hallways, uh, there's a significant amount of room in between the two two beds. Each each person within a double room has their own nightstand, their own chair, their own closet, uh, and then they share a restroom in that in that room. And, and there is a there's a floor floor plan up front here. If anybody wants to take a look, so you can see the, the actual square footage and the layout. How much will these rooms Well, for 32 of the residents, they won't cost. They'll cost what they call a cost of care. So the state main care takes care of the majority of the uh, the cost. And for a private pay room that runs about 225 to 250 dollars a day. And that includes all the services, the medication administration, the food, activities, transportation, and so forth. Yes. Will the priority for housing go 
to the Madison and Skowhegan residents first. Well, you said that there were a lot of people on the waiting list from this area. There were people from other facilities that are from this area. Would, would this, this facility um, be populated <coughs> by those people first? Priority? I think it would, we, don't, we don't set a priority per se, but it would be need based. So if there's 50 people that need the service, you know, we would assess those 50 people and make a decision as they come. In some cases, it's a, if somebody qualifies, it's a first come, first serve. You know, whoever needs it, whoever has you know, the, the, the ability and the time frame uh, to move in. But ideally, we figure we'll be, our primary market catchment area would be Madison Scouty. And because as you can start going south, we have our Waterville community. As you start going west, we have Farmington. So there's always a little crossover. People would have to apply for this location as well, right? You wouldn't just automatically take this from the other locations. No, yeah, they would, every, every new resident applies and is assessed by one of our nurses and then... Could you put the map back of where your locations are in the state, please? Sure. Are you planning on doing anything further north? Well, we're in Brewer. That's as far north as we are. We, you know, we've, we've looked at uh, opportunities in the county. It's a little, little bit of a, little bit of a trek. Um, you know, we've looked at some places, you know, further down east. But right now, we don't have any plans to go further north than Brewer or Farmington. Any, any other? Uh, I, I think I heard a comment up there. This is different from the wood lawn facility in Skowhegan. Yes, we, we don't, we're not associated with wood That's lawn, which totally is a different facility. nursing home. Well, all the way in the back corner. Do you ever transfer your patients to the other facilities? Within, within, the, within our organization? Yes. Yeah, we will do, um, sometimes if, if we're full, so say if we're in Hollowell, and our community in Hollowell is full, but a bed opens up in Waterville, we may transfer somebody or, or and then with the idea that they would move back to where their first choice was once, once there's an opportunity. Any other questions on the facility? Yeah. All right. Seeing none at this time, I'll grab that. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you very much, Matthew. So, in most of these communities where Woodlands has their senior living facilities, they have gone into these communities and asked for a tax incentive or a tax break in order to help fund the construction of the facility. When the Walters family came and spoke to the Board of Selectmen, uh, they gave a very similar presentation. Uh, the Selectmen thought it was a very good project. And so when they asked for a TIF agreement, the selectmen found themselves with a little back and forth, but they agreed to a 15-year term where Woodlawn uh, would keep a certain percentage of their taxes, and by keeping that tax money, it helps to finance the cost of building the project. I, I'm going to sense that we're a fairly educated group here tonight. I'm not going to go into nitty-gritty details about TIFs, but I do have some basic information. Mr. Moody? You, you might want to mention how much they're going to invest in this. Right, property. right. So this is about a, a five and a half million dollar project. Um, I don't know if many of you have had the opportunity to take a look or drive or visit the facility in Farmington. Uh, that facility in Farmington is much like their other ones. It's a very beautiful, well cared for facility. Now that facility in Farmington is twice the size of this projected one, and it has senior living and memory care. This is just a memory care facility. The Farmington facility received a 10-year TIF from the town of Farmington, and when the selectmen talked with the Walters about doing a TIF in the, for this project, they requested a little bit longer uh, term. 
if you're familiar with the term that we have with backyard farms, backyard farms is a 30-year uh, TIF, so this one would be much shorter. Also, backyard farms covers about $50 million in valuation, where this one would cover much less, probably between four and $5 million in valuation. So the benefit of a TIF, there's a benefit to you, the taxpayer, and there's a benefit to the business. The benefit to you, the taxpayer, is you shelter the valuation. And as most of you know, when you get your tax bills, you see that they're broken into three categories. What we pay for education services, what we pay to the county taxes, and that what, then what we pay for our municipal services. By sheltering an investment like this, I'm going to move ahead to a couple slides, I anticipated 50 turnout uh, people, that's why I made 50 copies, so I apologize if you have to share. And for those of you who are sitting in the back, I know you can't see this. Um, I have to squint, and I'm about five feet away from it. So the benefit to you, the taxpayer, is by sheltering the valuation, it allows the town to receive more money from the state in education, it allows the town to get a reduction in the amount we pay to the county for tax, and we receive, receive an increase of our revenue sharing benefit. So this is a formula that is put together. It's not exact, and it won't hold to be the same uh, throughout the entire 15 years, but by sheltering, you the taxpayer will see a benefit of about $48,000 a year that's more money that we receive from outside sources to pay for schools and county uh, services. So that means that's less money we have to raise from you in taxes. The benefit to the business is that they get to keep a certain portion of their tax bill. As I mentioned in Farmington, the arrangement that select board made was to allow them to keep all their taxes 100%. Our select board agreed to a 15-year term with an 85% retention which means, and again, this is just for example, if there's a $4 million valuation and the mill rate is $21.50, which it is right now, we hope it'll go down, we're working toward that end, they would pay $86,000 in taxes. They would retain, in other words, get to keep $73,000 a year in taxes, and the just under $13,000 would be retained by the town which can be used for economic development projects. So that's the long and short uh, of the TIF arrangements. Does anyone have any questions about that? Right there. What is the, um, what are we getting for taxes on that land as it, as it sits right now? Right now that land is valued at $27,000. So we receive about $400 a year in taxes on it. Maybe $500. Maybe $589. There we go. Good. You're not paying his taxes, are you? You seem to know that number pretty quick. I looked it up. Yes, sir. Is that $13,000 what they would be paying property taxes for the year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
put in five point something million. We don't know what the final cost is until okay, we build it. You just it represented that we're going to, the value added is we're going to build a five point something million dollar facility. When, when we run the numbers, we use this number, four million. That's that was our assessment. That was our static number. We just number. stated to, to this group, to this quorum, that an added benefit to our community is they're going to invest five point some one million. Okay. In this statement, you said 4.6. Okay. Can you explain that discrepancy? Or would you, would you care? Well, I can certainly try, but I, I'm not really sure what. I, and let me but just yes, say, I, I don't know what the difference is. Just answer the question. I'm not asking you to be defensive. Just answer the question as a public official who made public statements in a paper of public record. Mm -hmm. I would say my answer would be. This project could range from 4.6 to 5.6 million. Okay. We don't know yet. Is that, Let me, is, that, is that a more accurate statement than the one that was in the paper yeah, record? Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. It also says a 42 bed senior living center. Are there any restrictions for expansion in the 15 year period? In other words, could they multiply that by 10 times if they have space? That, could they theoretically expand this to a 420 bed facility? No, because the the current plan as it is would utilize all the seven acres they're looking so at. So you can they point would, to a specific restriction that would stop them from expanding this over the 15 year period. This project is geared specifically to this parcel of land that is seven acres. If they wanted to expand, I didn't ask you about the restrictions on the to, land area. Now hold on, I'm trying to answer your question. Okay, I don't think you are, sir. I think you're trying to deflect. You're not letting us. This project is restricted to this parcel of land. If they wanted to add and, and multiply the facility, they would have to do it on a different parcel of land. And it would not be in this project? No. This project is for this, this so proposal. My question again, is there a restriction from them expanding within this tip zone? Is there a specific restriction? The yes or no? That's a yes or no thing, sir. Yes, by the main building and energy code. Very good. So, I'm not sure what the whole other sidetrack was, but I think it was deflection. Uh, Say it again. It was a 28. Yep. There you go. Personal attack deflection and blow. Like, awesome. It says it is a 28 to 30 full time jobs. You say two times down in this article, it'll be more than 30 full time jobs. First question. Is it 28 or 30? And what is a full-time job? How do you de define a full-time job, Matt? Uh, more than 32 hours. Okay. So 30 full-time and then a handful of part-time. Can you see where that's maybe a little shady? Because most of us consider a 40-hour week. <laughs> <laughs> so right. but, yeah, you know, the point, listen, wait for the point. Wait for the point. We, we're just starting. This is the first two paragraphs here. I, I, these, are, these are questions. You know, you say 28 to 30, and then you say more than 30 full-time jobs. So which is it? 28, 30, or more than 30? Okay. I think the commitment is 28 to 30 jobs. And again, they'll know better how many full -time jobs. They'll know better how many jobs uh, will be part of this project when the project is done. Uh, can I ask how many questions you have? Sir, when I began, I asked you to go through this article. Okay. We're, we're getting there, and I want to move. Yes and no, awful, awful, awful. All right. All right. Um, you know, I'm not really trying to set you up. I don't think this is a good policy, as you can tell. Uh, I find several holes in this, and I'd like to, like to have an answer, or at least a dress. Okay. Whether I feel good about it later, I don't care. I just want you to answer. Okay. Right? Uh, you said it's a perfect fit for our community. All right, let's not get into that. Uh, it will provide upwards of 30 jobs. All right, now we've established that won't. Well, the commitment is 28 to 30, not upwards of 30. Uh, it's semantics. It, well, it's semantics until you use it to steal from your neighbors. Let's, let's just let finish this question. You said in this, you made a statement that you weigh how all the potential for business like this. Can you show me a yardstick or a scale that weighs potential? Whenever a town enters into a TIF, we look at two things. Does it provide jobs? 
Like if we were to TIF a, a solar array, that wouldn't make any sense because a solar array doesn't provide jobs. So this provides jobs. It also provides a needed benefit to residents in our community by providing the care that they provide. That's what I was talking about. How do you weigh potential? Can I go buy a scale at the store and weigh potential? No. Okay. I don't think you've been honest with what it's going to cost and what we're going to lose. When you take millions of dollars out of our budget over your 15 year period, everybody else in this town has to make up any shortfalls. That's the point of this. And I really don't think in any public statement or this paper or any statement so far that you've really explained to the people of this town how the TIF works, that even that $13,000 estimated isn't going into the general fund. And that will be made, have to be made up by the taxpayers. This is a wealth redistribution fund. I don't care what awesome sounding buzzwords you have. Statements have been made that business is good. So why am I paying my taxes when under law I don't have to? I'm a disabled veteran. But I still contribute to my local and county government by not getting my refund from my taxes because it's morally the right thing to do for me to support my local town. Why is someone, I make 50000 a year, why is someone that I believe is hard to find but estimated $50 million in revenue, why are we giving them money to make more money when business is good? They're, they're sold out. There are, there's waiting lists. Can you answer that or would you just like to say something on it? Why? I appreciate your comments and that's why we're doing this public hearing. There's a question. Why, why are we doing it? Why? The board is Explain to me why morally I legally doesn't have to pay my local taxes. I still do morally because it's the right thing to do. Explain to me why it's the right thing to do to give rich people more money from my pocket and my neighbors to make more money. He's already said in all these articles and in public statements that business is good. They're sold out. You're putting it under the guise that we're helping elderly, who are helping people with dementia. Everyone in this room can agree that is a noble, laudable cause. This is not a nonprofit. They are making money. And then you stand up here and say, well, the, the customers really aren't going to pay this. The state will. Uh, Main care is going to pick up a lot of this for a lot of people. Again, wealthy redistribution. That money is coming from the taxpayers. So it doesn't matter who it's coming from. It is going to the for-profit corporation. This is not a, a non-profit. This is a for-profit company. Why am I giving money to a for-profit company to make more profit? Answer that. I'll try to do it in three quick statements. One. This is a town meeting where a majority rules. Two, we don't have this tax revenue yet because this business isn't here in Madison. And three, this business we anticipate and hope will be here a lot longer than 15 years. And 16 years from now, they'll be paying 80 some thousand dollars a year in taxes. Is there any contract or restriction that they must stay here and that they can't sell? I mean, look at backyard farms, there's no restriction there, and they've sold. So we're not even dealing with the same people that we made the agreement with. That, that's that's but possible. the TIF still stands, correct? Correct. The TIF stands regardless of who owns it. sounds shady to you guys. I don't know what it is, okay? They, that's, this is what these companies do. They go through massive expansions with your money, and when, when business is looking good, they sell it off, make more money, and you're on the hook and they're not. Okay, this is uh, a selectman's meeting under the guidance of Chairman Vinziano, so I'm going to turn it back over to him to see if there's any further questions. All right, are, there any, are there any other questions? Yes, Bill. Um, I, in my little ranch house, I pay around $2,000 a year property tax, right? And yet, we have that huge, brand new, nice bills business paying six times my little house pays, you know, that sounds like I'm paying quite a bit of money on my home compared to what that great big business is going to pay. Correct. It's only paying six times more than I am for my little ranch house. Thank you. Uh, I would say go in and, and talk to Shirley and, and talk that through. That's all. I mean, I don't have that answer for you here. All right, are there any other questions? Yes. 
When would this um, facility be completed? I think it said the summer of 2020. All right, thanks. Yep. Yes, sir. Can I make a motion to move the point, please? Uh, we are in a public hearing. It's, you can't. We're, we're taking questions and comments from the public. We'll so shortly stop the public hearing. I was looking for a second. All right. <laughs> All right, are there any other questions? <laughs> yes, Phil. What happens if we say no to the Then they, the Woodlands facility has some choices to make. Do they move away or do they... That's up to them. That's up to them. Can we address the question? Is your representative willing to answer that question? Um, that's, it is up to them when they, when they get the final vote, what they decide. That's not, that's not for us to decide here. Can we ask it? Um, I can. I mean, I don't know if he has an answer for you because I'm sure he's just representing them. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, the, everything, the, the land purchase, everything is contingent on the TIF planning board approval, all the necessary approvals, so. Okay, any other questions? Excuse me, sorry. Is there any other questions? <laughs> any other questions? All right, seeing none, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed. Looking for a motion to adjourn the selectmen's meeting, please. So no, adjourn the selectmen's meeting. Second. All right, a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Uh, we will stop the town meeting. So at this time, the Slutman's meeting is closed and we will enter into the town meeting. So Mr. Arnold, if I can get you to shut off that projector, we're going to raise the screen. The Slutman will uh, take their places up here on the uh, stage and our town clerk will call the meeting to order. Good evening. I'd like to call this town meeting to order, having met our quorum for the special town meeting of 50 registered voters. <coughs> to Ronald, to Ronald Maria Constable for the town of Madison and the county of Somerset, state of Maine. Greetings. In the name of the state of Maine, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Madison in said county and state qualified by law to vote in town affairs to meet at the Madison Area Junior High School Auditorium in said town on Monday, the 11th day of May 2019 AD at 7 o'clock in the evening, then and there to act upon Articles 1, 2, and 3 as set out below to wit. Article 1, to choose a moderator to preside at said meeting. Do I hear any nominations for moderator? Second. Are there any other nominations? Move the nomination C. Second. Nomination tab C. Those voting to wish those wish to vote for moderator. The moderator elected has been Arnie Hilton.
Hilton. Aye. Ernest Hilton. Do swear. Do swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So long as I shall. So long as I shall. Continue a citizen thereof. Continue a citizen thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Ernest Hilton. I, Ernest Hilton. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent upon me. The duties incumbent upon me. As moderator of this meeting. As moderator of this meeting. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of the state. And laws of the state of Maine. So help me. Uh, they threw me off a little bit. The podium is usually over there. You <laughs> lost. <laughs> yeah, so I got lost, as John suggests. <laughs> um, <clears throat> to those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Ernie Hilton. I'm an attorney. I have an office a couple hundred yards away down the corner of Heald and uh, Western Avenue. Um, <clears throat> I've moderated a number of meetings. Uh, I won't call myself an expert thereof. I'm going to propose an Article 1A which is that we adopt the rules of the Maine Moderators Manual, 6th edition, 2005, as the rules governing this meeting. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor, please raise your hands. Down hands, all those opposed. Yes, motion. I'm going to also uh, <coughs> propose an Article 1B, which is to uh, <coughs> provide prior approval to anyone from outside town who may be requested to speak at this meeting. Uh, it may be that the uh, gentleman representing Woodlands might be an appropriate candidate for that. If there's any uh, anticipation that he'll be, uh, that people want to speak with him in the course of this, do I hear a motion to that effect? So we'll move. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Down hands, all those opposed. Okay, that's a vote. The, uh, the usual practice is for the moderator to read the, uh, the warrant, which I will do, but you'll have to stand with me for a little while because it's going to take a little while. Um, can everybody hear me the way I'm speaking right now? Is there anybody who wants me to use the microphone? Okay, hearing none. Article 2. Shall the voters of the town of Madison, Maine, designate the Woodlands Senior Living of Madison Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District and adopt the development program for such district presented to the town meeting and authorize the selectmen to enter into a credit enhancement ag agreement for the development program. Such designation, adoption, and authorization to be pursuant to the following findings, terms, and provisions. Whereas the town of Madison, being the town, is authorized pursuant to Chapter 206 of Title 30-A of the Maine Revised Statutes as amended to designate a specific area within the town as the Woodlands Senior Living of Madison Municipal De Development and Tax Increment Financing District, parentheses the district, and to adopt a development program for the district, parentheses the development program, and whereas there is a need for industrial and commercial development in the town, and whereas there is a need to provide continuing employment opportunities for the citizens of the town and the surrounding region, to improve and broaden the tax base of the town and to improve the general economy of the town, the surrounding region, and the state of Maine, and whereas implementation of the development program will help to provide continued employment for the citizens of the town and the surrounding region, improve and broaden the tax base in the town, and improve the economy of the town and the state of Maine, and whereas the town has held a public hearing on the question of establishing the district in accordance with the requirements of Title 30-A MRS Section 5226, upon at least 10 days prior notice published in the newspaper of general circulation within the town, and whereas the town desires to designate the Woodlands Senior Living of Madison Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District and to adopt a development program for the district, and whereas it is expected that approval will be sought and obtained from the main Department of Economic and Community Development, parentheses, the Department, approving the designation of the district and the adoption of the development program for the district. Now, therefore, be it hereby voted by the town. Section 1. The town hereby finds and determines that the designation of the district and pursuant to the development program will generate substantial economic benefits for the town 
and its citizens and its residents, including employment opportunities, broadened and improved tax base and economic stimulus, and therefore constitutes a good and valid public purpose. Section two, the town hereby finds and determines that A, at least 25% by area of the real property within the district, as hereinafter designated, is suitable for commercial uses as defined in Title 30-A, MRS, Section 5223.3, and B, the total area of the district does not exceed 2% of the total acreage of the town, and the total area of all existing and proposed development districts within the town, including the proposed district, does not exceed 5% of the total acreage of the town, and C, the original assessed value of all existing and proposed tax increment financing districts, including the proposed district, does not exceed 5% of the total value of equalized taxable property within the town as of the most recent April 1st for which such value is available, and D, the designation of the district and adoption of the related development program will make a contribution to the economic growth and well-being of the town of Madison and the surrounding region and will contribute to the betterment of the health, welfare, and safety of the inhabitants of the town, including a broadened and improved tax base and economic stimulus, and therefore constitutes a good and valid public purpose. The town has considered all evidence, if any, presented to it with regard to any adverse economic effect on or detriment to any existing business and has found and determined that such adverse economic effect on or detriment to any existing business, if any, is outweighed by the contribution expected to be made through the district and the development program. Section 3. Pursuant to Chapter 206 of Title 30-A of the Main Revised Statutes as amended, the town hereby designates the Woodlands Senior Living of Madison Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District as designated, described, and otherwise as more particularly set forth in the Woodlands Senior Living of Madison Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District Development Program as presented to the town meeting, which development program is hereby incorporated by reference into this vote and hereby adopted as the development program for the district. Section 4. Pursuant to the provisions of Title 30-A, May Revised Statute Section 5224, the percentage of increased assessed value to be retained as captured assessed value in accordance with the development program is to be established as set forth in the development program. Section 5. The Board of Selectmen or the duly appointed representatives shall be, and each of them hereby is authorized, empowered, and directed to submit the designation of the district and the proposed development program for the district to the State of Maine Department of Economic and Community Development for review and approval pursuant to the requirements of Title 30-A, Maine Revised Statutes, Section 5226. Section 6. The Board of Selectmen or the duly appointed representatives shall be, and each of them hereby is, authorized and empowered at his or her discretion from time to time to make such revisions to the development program for the district as the town manager may deem reasonably necessary or convenient in order to facilitate the process for review and approval of the district by the department, or for any other reason, so long as such revisions are not inconsistent with these resolutions or the basic structure and intent of the development program. Section 7. The foregoing designation of the district and the adoption of the development program for the district shall automatically become final and shall take full force and effect upon receipt by the town of approval of the amendment to the district and adoption of the development program by the Department of Economic and Community Development without requirement of further action by the town, the Board of Selectmen, or any other party. Section 8. The Board of Selectmen or their duly appointed representatives shall be, and each of them hereby is authorized and directed to enter into the Credit Enhancement Agreement contemplated by the development program with Woodlands Senior Living of Madison, LLC, or its designee, in the name of and on behalf of the town, such agreement to be in such form and to contain such terms and provisions not inconsistent with the development program as the said Board of Selectmen or their duly appointed representatives may approve his or her approval to be conclusively evidenced by his or her execution thereof. Do I hear a motion? 
So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? Um, seeing none. Yes. I'd like to address a couple of the issues that this gentleman uh, uh, rose uh, during the uh, public hearing portion of it. Um, he was. He wrote. Uh, one of the things he uh, commented about was the possibility of some enlarged expansion. If that should happen, there would be two things, or at least one I'm sure of, is it would have to come before the Madison Planning Board. So they would have a chance to have a thorough review of it to be sure that it would fit in the property. The other thing, I'm sure that any expansion would have to go before the state health and human services and they'd have to get a certificate of need. I may be wrong on that, but I'm sure any health facility where they Medicare is providing, or Medicaid in this state, would be providing the benefits, would have to receive a certificate from the state. The other issue he, uh, the gentleman uh, arose was uh, the amount of taxes the town would lose on this thing. Well, if, they, if it didn't have a tip, there was about $84,000 in taxes. Presently, 70 to 75 cents of every dollar that we pay in property taxes <clears throat> essentially goes to the state, to the schools, and to the county. So out of that $84,000, somewhere around $60,000 would go to the state and the county. The town of Madison would receive a benefit of a little over $20,000, twenty dollars to $24,000. It would depend on the ultimate uh, valuation placed on the property and the tax rate. If they get a tip, tip for this property, the way it's set up, uh, the chart that the town manager showed up there, we'd get about uh, $48,000 more in education funds, this, uh, the town itself would. And it is just the town of Madison. We don't have Starks, we don't have Brighton, we don't have Athens. So this is $48,000 more to our benefit, right here, the citizens of Madison. The other thing he mentioned, I think there was somewhere around $9,000 more in state revenue sharing because of our valuation. And on, uh, there was plus there'd be about $13,000 out of that TIF money that the town itself could keep. So the town would end up with approximately $70,000 more by having this project that could go to some other community, would get all these same kind of benefits. Or we could both not give them the tip. They may stay here, they may not, but assuming they stayed here, they paid the ready four thousand dollars, and we could get twenty to uh, twenty-four thousand dollars in taxes from it. Now I don't know about the rest of you folks, but somehow seventy thousand dollars sounds a heck of a lot better than twenty or twenty-four thousand dollars, and that's the bottom line. Tips is a state program. It was enacted by the legislature. You can have a philosophical difference about it, but it does exist. And they're doing it all over the state. Uh, we've done it with a number of projects here in the town of Madison over the years, and we've benefited very, very well from it. And I think for, to be concerned about the, uh, the, we, uh, somebody paying uh, not their share of taxes and some business is going to make out like a bandit on this, they're in business. The TIFS was designed specifically for this kind of thing, to encourage this kind of business. They're going to have 28 to 30 jobs, 32 hours a week, 40 hours a week. I don't know. I don't really care. That's 30 jobs that are going to be good jobs that will pay good money for, the, for those people in this area. For us to turn this down, this is, seems like a real slap in the face. Stupidity. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Open the question. Call for a vote. Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote, and uh, I believe you all have blue cards. So I need to, uh, so all those in favor of the uh, article as presented, 
Please raise your blue cups. Pads down. Uh, all opposed. I see three or four opposed. Uh, so it's a vote. We have another article here. To see if the voters of the town will appropriate $19,569.48 from undesignated fund balance to cover an overdraft of the amount approved for Article 7, quote, other government, end quote, at the town meeting in June 12, 2017. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, sir. Uh, what was this bill for? So I, I, I can address that. And uh, Whenever town meeting approves a certain amount of money, and in this case, it was for the money that we spend at waste management, uh, to handle debris and, and, and the products that we take there to the back gate of North Walk and also that uh, if you have a commercial hall or pick up your trash. So we have a budget for what we spend at waste management. Whenever we find ourselves in a situation where we go over what the town has approved for that budget, our financial policy requires that we either hold a special town meeting immediately or wait until the next special or regular town meeting to ask the voters to approve this overdraft uh, from the general fund. In this particular case, this money was approved uh, in 2017's town meeting, so almost two years ago. If you recall, November of 2017, October, November, we had a very bad storm, knocked over a lot of trees, many of you were without power for quite some time. We saw a significant increase in the amount of debris that was taken to waste management in December, January, and February and it forced us to go over budget. By the time we caught it, we had already gone through 2018's town meeting, and so this is the next opportunity to remedy this situation, and it has to be done by you folks. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask for a vote. So all those in favor, please raise your blue cards. Thank you, down cards. All those opposed, that's a vote. I think we need a motion to adjourn. So we'll. All those in favor? We'll